Well, if you're just joining us, welcome to Briançon. We're here for the Lead World Cup. Speed was the other evening. Now time for the lead athletes to compete. And uh, Campbell, what's this moment like? When they walk to the front of the stage, you've got that audience in front of them. What do you think is going through their heads? What would be going through your head? Um, I mean, I imagine it's very special. I imagine it's a little bit intimidating as well, like having so much of a crowd and the crowd here is like so excited about climbing. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, especially for the ones who are making finals for the first time, probably just trying to like soak it all in and just really, uh, you know, feel like grateful for the like the opportunity that they're about to have to, to show what they got. And Sebastian Helenka is so happy to be back. He really wasn't <laughs> expecting it, I tell you, after qualies, but uh, it's good to see him. And look how many Japanese athletes there are. Two Europeans, six Japanese athletes. I don't know where they find their talent from. Yeah, well, they, I've, I spent a bit of time training in Japan earlier this year, and it really is just like such a deep field there. I think also specific to Briançon, when you take the combined athletes out, they, you tend to get their pure lead specialist team. And so whilst this might seem like small names, these are their like star lead climbers. Um, so yeah, this is where you really see some of the like Japanese lead specific talent. Yeah, exactly. What this man, just 18 years old, one participation. First, bomb, first finals. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? And you know, you could almost call this, I mean, I spoke to some of the Japanese coaches and they were saying that the team at the moment is kind of split. There's the Olympians and then there's everyone else. Mm. If this is their B team, it's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's exactly it. It's like, this is their quote unquote B team, but this is their lead A team, yeah. you know? Like, for the most part, these are the ones who are, you know, yeah, specifically good at this discipline. Yes, and then Max Berton, we saw the reaction from the crowd. I kind of predicted this, I'm going to claim this one. Yeah, okay. Because he's, you know, he's it's his third World Cup, but there's something about Max Berton, you just know he's going to be a regular in the future. Yeah, yeah, 100%. He's uh, obviously the talent runs in the family, I yeah. think. Yeah, exactly, sister of Oriane. Shooter there. <laughs> there we go. This is Happy support. birthday, Alan. <laughs> I wonder who Alan is. All right, and Zento Morishita will be announced next. He steps forward and says hello to the crowd. He's just 25 World Cups so far. And then Satini, Satoni Yoshida. I mean, we've seen him do a lot of bolder competitions recently, mm -hmm. and he's looking way more powerful than I've seen yeah, him before. Yeah, I think so. I think he's, yeah, really in form. I mean, so much of lead climbing, honestly, is just being physically strong. Uh, being able to pull hard moves that, you know, the harder the move you can pull, the easier they're going to feel. So, yeah, that, that extra power certainly wouldn't be going astray. No, absolutely. Especially when there's boulder problems stacked on boulder problems. And finally, Shion Omata. He looked great during qualifying. He was dominant in semi-finals, and he will climb last here tonight. Okay, well, that's pretty much the formalities done. The athletes now will leave. Half of them will stay behind the wall. Half will go back to the isolation zone that's down a little hill into a gym. And Campbell, in terms of isolation, we actually did a little feature in the isolation on the World Climbing Club you can watch tonight. But it's a strange place to be as an athlete, isn't it? Because it's super busy qualifying in semis, and then during finals, very quiet. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, in the qualification, like, it was a short round, so everyone was warming up pretty early in the day. Um, it's quite a small, in terms of, it's a big area, mm. but the climbing wall here is quite small. Um, so everyone's just trying to get a space on the wall. It can be like really cutthroat. And then by the time you whittle it down to 16 athletes, um, yeah, it feels very, very quiet. All right, well, we're gonna have a look at the observation. This is a unique aspect of climbing. Old hands at the sport will understand this, but for those people watching for the first time, what on earth is going on stage here, Campbell? Yeah, so essentially the climbers haven't seen these routes before, um, and so they have six minutes to in which to view the route and come up with a, uh, some proposed ideas, perhaps, of how they're going to complete it. So usually first thing you'll do is read through the route by yourself. Um, you kind of try to create a mental image of the route, knowing where all the feet are, um, and then you'll go through the route kind of section by section with other competitors and uh, maybe try to nut out the smaller details, the beta that we call it. So um, yeah, figuring out where you might clip the clips from, where you might rest from. Sometimes you might need like two or even three different ideas of how you might complete a certain section. Sometimes the six minutes can feel like it takes forever if it's a simple route. And sometimes six minutes just really doesn't feel like enough. <laughs> and then in terms of memorizing something like this, because there's a lot of moves on that wall, yeah. how do you do that? I mean, everybody's different. Some people have that mental capacity to just remember every in its entirety um, I do not so I rather just try to 
I try to like teach my body and my mind kind of where all the holds are so that when I get on the wall, I can kind of flow instinctually. I wouldn't go back into isolation and have like an exact clear picture of like, this is all 50 moves. This is exactly what I'm going to do. So, uh, but every, yeah, everybody's different. And does it ever put you off? Because if you look at a route and you think, that's not my style, or there's a move in there that I'm going to struggle with, can it unsettle you? Um, I think it can. Uh, I think it kind of depends on the level of the competition. Sometimes you'll come out and think that a route maybe looks too easy, and if you haven't, uh, if you haven't climbed well in the previous round, then you might feel like you're not able to make up that that extra room. Um, but most of the time, I mean, like I said, six minutes often feels quite fast. So you're just trying to like collect as much information as possible, um, and maybe you're not really processing like the emotions of the route just yet. You're just trying to figure out exactly what you need to do. Okay, well, thank you, Campbell. It's always great to have our athletes in the commentary box tell us exactly what's going on in an athlete's head. We're almost time to get underway here. The crowd who have been filing into the stadium are waiting expectantly for the athletes. Darkness will start to descend soon. Coming up to 8.30 Central European time here. And uh, this stadium really comes to light when the lights themselves hit the wall. And you can see in the background there a stunning sunset on the mountains that surround this stadium. It is a special place to go climbing. Welcome to Innsbruck then, and it is time to get going for the lead finals. Eight athletes have found their way to this last final climb. Whittled down from a big qualifying field of over 60 athletes, 26 in semis and just eight have made it this far. And Sebastian Helenke walking on. And Campbell, you said, you know, you know this man really well, but what a comeback from him. A couple of meniscus surgeries on the way. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is kind of his uh, second big comeback, really. He disappeared for a little bit, then he was back performing well, disappeared again for some surgeries. Um, and he's here again, and he, yeah, he came straight out, and he didn't feel great in qualies from what I heard, but uh, semi-finals, he had a great performance, and yeah, here he is in his first final in quite some time, I think, so yeah, exciting to see him back on the field. Okay, well, we get our first look at this route. Not the easiest of starts, some thin crimps in there. Yeah, my first thought looking at the start up close was that it looked kind of sketchy and quite complicated. Um, there's a, a sequence coming up here. You can see that little pink blocker over a foothold that I think might be some kind of like uh, turnaround sequence or at least, you know, kind of unsettling and kind of balancey. Uh, likely not too hard, but it's definitely going to be something that, yeah, tricks a little a, a few athletes into maybe losing their flow. Um, Basti's not necessarily a, much of a boulderer, so yeah, we'll see how he chooses to progress through. Yeah, that palm looked a little bit sketchy as he came down, and a slightly weird quick draw combination here as well, with that short one and a long one. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's quite, almost quite close to have the two quick draws, so it'd be easy to maybe miss one or, you know, go past it. Well, he had a look up there. I think he was thinking about right or left hand, and that it's big enough to match and take a bit of a breather. Yeah, looking at the route from the ground, a lot of these holes look quite good, um, but there's not a lot of feet. So I think it'll be quite a like a powerful campusy sort of route all the way up into the head wall. And then the head wall here just goes for a really long time. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because it is enormous. Usually we talk about head wall and the angle changes and things are different. Look at this, Sebastian just launching through these sequences. He's got to move quite quickly here, I think. You don't want to be hanging around on those slopers. No, I don't think so. I think, like, yeah, as I said, the holds are good, but the feet are bad, so you're not necessarily going to get a whole lot back from trying to recover on these holds. It's a different style of route. If you've watched other World Cups, you tend to get quite a brutal sequence in the middle. This one is real endurance. He loses his feet here, tries to get that left engaged. And these black volumes coming up haven't changed much from the women's route we saw the other day. Similar kind of fridge huggy moves to come. Yeah, I think we have another little campus sequence coming up in this bit. So I'll be interested to see how the athletes piece that one together. And yeah, the next section after this, this like fridge hugging sequence is a little bit cryptic. Um, probably quite difficult to read from the ground and you maybe have to be ready to improvise a little bit when you get up there. Um, but yeah, you'll want to get this clip in before he, before he moves over to the next section. Yeah, Sebastian about halfway through this route now. Adjusts the hands. Yeah, but most of the other World Cups you see athletes, when they reach the head wall, the route's almost over, but the Brionson wall is quite different. 
a really cool little campus move there. But it's quite different in that the head wall is quite long, so we still have, yeah, about half the route to go from here. Yeah, and that head wall is coming up there. You can see it on our wide shot. Lots of climbing to go. Now, that blue cross above his right hand, that's to indicate the last clipping position. So he needs to clip somewhere around here before moving on. Yeah, so if he were to progress past this point, he wouldn't receive any points for it. So he has to make sure that clip goes in uh, before he moves on to the next hold. We've seen quite a few athletes missing quick draws in the last couple of comps, either climbing past and thinking you can clip at a later point and then realizing mm. you can't. But it's uh, it's really easy to do. Yeah. It's like, it's not necessarily, skipping a quick draw doesn't necessarily mean that you didn't know it was there, but quite often you'll think, oh, this hold's not so good, this hold's not so good. And then before you know it, you can't reach the draw anymore. And then you have to either climb back down or just kind of accept your demise, I guess. Yes. We saw Mia Crample really battling in Chamonix for that reason. But yeah, so far he's uh, found pretty good positions for all of the clips. Now, slightly bad feet through here. It's yeah, quite a technical little sequence. And these volumes have some texture, mostly textured, but then these small sections without texture. Um, which can be quite tricky if you're not familiar with the volumes themselves. All right, well, he's through that tricky foot sequence. He's got blue holds to come. And it looked to me like the route gets significantly harder from this point onwards, so we might start to see him get a little bit more pumped than what we've seen so far, because uh, up until this point, I think he's looked quite, quite confident. Yes, he's looked in total control, hasn't he? All right, comes out to the left, then he loses it. Al was out of nowhere on that move. Yeah. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I think it kicks in pretty fast, similarly to the similar to the style we saw in semi-finals. You know, it was a uh, not super difficult to get up toward the top of the wall, but then you know, really hard to make it to the finish. All right, well, Sebastian's night is over. High up on the head wall, we'll have to wait and see, of course, where that leads him. But uh, the top is the best score you can possibly get. But each hold has a numerical number, and you get a plus for using that hold. So moving your center of gravity and mass and hands towards the next hold. Let's see some of his moments here on our slow motion shots, boosting up down low onto these big sort of turquoise, I don't know what color to call that, mint perhaps holds. And then this is where he fell to so going left, running out of feet, running out of steam. Sebastian comes down. All right, well, he will now go to the side of the stage on the left where those pads are set up. And we wait for our next athlete who will be Yuta coming out onto the stage. There he is getting ready to climb. Yuta Imiazumi is underway now into these pinches. And as you said, kind of not easy down low, but maybe a case of uh, just preventing yourself getting too pumped. Yeah, it's a little bit sketchy. You know, wh when you step onto the wall, you want to be able to like find your flow and kind of disappear into the route. Um, and uh, some of these sequences with holds you're not so sure of, um, or maybe like complex movement makes it quite tricky to find that flow straight off the bat. So you kind of have to get through this tricky sequence and almost reset. Um, and it can really sort of set the tone for the rest of your attempt. All right, well, he is through that long, quick draw, which is really unusual to have that so low on the route. So Yuta making his way through nice and smooth so far. Got to keep calm. The crowd here in Briançon are pretty educated in terms of watching climbing, so they won't be cheering in weird moments. They'll understand what the athletes are going through. Yeah, it, climbing is a, a big part of the way of life here, I think. There's a lot of really good uh, outdoor climbing around here. Um, and yeah, the French crowd typically just love climbing. Yes, they do. We saw Chamonix last week. Everyone made the journey down to Briançon. And what a comp that was in Chamonix as well. I don't think I've ever seen a crowd quite that big in the Place du Mont Blanc. Yeah, it looked huge. Really exciting. I think the French, uh, French are really getting behind climbing in the lead up to the Olympics as well. There's a lot of, um, of publicity and a lot of hype surrounding our sport, which is really exciting to see. Yes, it is, and a few French stars will be competing in this. Yuta won't be there, as you said, more of a lead specialist. Well, he made that look a little bit easier than Sebastian did. I think he's looking not the most, yeah, not necessarily the most comfortable and mm. most confident. Um, but, you know, yeah, stepping out for a World Cup final is always an intimidating scenario. Um, Oof, that yeah, was close. So not the same level of 
confidence we saw from Sebastian. You know, he was having to try hard, but he never looked like he was, you know, in doubt of himself. Yeah. I think we're seeing a very different kind of climb here. Yes, I kind of feel like Sebastian feels like he's got nothing to lose and he might as well enjoy it. But for yeah, these oh, athletes... That, oh, sorry, his heel just had a, the littlest slip. He was kind of heel hooking his uh, his shoe strap and I thought it was coming off, but... It was close, good. It? He didn't... Uh, yeah, he, he lives to climb another few moves at least. Yes, he does. And you're right about it. It's kind of like a little bit jerky at the moment. Hasn't quite got yeah. his flow in. And that's exactly like what I was saying before. You know, that starts really sketchy and you have to be able to like find your flow again. And maybe after a tricky start, he hasn't quite found his flow. It can be really hard to, to reset mentally and kind of, yeah, find your feet again. Yeah, well, he's underneath these black volumes now. He's had an interesting career. 2021 was the last time he competed before this season. He did Wujiang at the start, did Innsbruck a couple of weeks ago where he was 24th. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> that's powerful. Yeah, yeah, looking strong there. I mean, you know, maybe he's a bit shaky, but he clearly still has plenty of power left in the tank. That was an awesome move to see, locking off that right arm. Okay, he's got to be careful of the rope. He's got to, got to drag it around his ankle, though. He flicks it out of the way and then over his arm. And he will have to flick that hand around the rope again. Oh, and you can oh. see it almost got in the way of that arm. Yeah, he lost his feet there. Bit of energy gone. Again, a little, little shaky, not having the best climb so far, but sometimes, you know, people just fold their way up the wall for a, a really standout performance. Struggling with his feet a little bit also. Yeah, those feet have let him down a few times now. How much has that cost him? You can see on the left the scoreboard, Sebastian's high point of 42 plus. You took quite a way below that. Good drop knee there on the pink jib. And then low on these sort of slopey side pulls. As you said, this is the kind of business end of the route from now on. Yeah, this is where it looks like the route really kicks in and becomes quite bumpy. Uh, and we're definitely seeing that, yeah, with the fall. It was coming, wasn't it? We sensed that it was, uh, it was in the mix. I think this route is very much going to be about how efficiently you can climb up to that point. Yeah. And then, yeah, how much energy you have left when you reach that, that final section. I think you're going to have to have quite a lot of energy left to hold those, like to go from those uh, like quite good holds, close hand crimps into like very open handed climbing, mm -hmm. very physical. Uh, well, Utah is done, the provisional second, so Sebastian's still in the top spot. Some big names to come though, remember Shiono Mata climbing last, Tony Yoshida and Zento, those three will finish things off for the men. After the men, we will have the women's competition. And let's see some of his highlights then. He was a bit shaky throughout, gave us some scares, but it was a good recovery climb, I think. Yeah, he was still able to progress quite high on the wall. So, um, yeah, never know what we're going to see for the rest, rest of the round, really. Yeah. Well, and that was the flick around the rope we saw and then coming out right. Didn't have the energy to hold that side pull. But a smile on his face. Job done. Next athlete out will be Mototaka. And you can just see him there waiting for his moment. So he's just 18, no medal so far, just one World Cup before this. Yeah, and this is so this was his first semi-final as well. He was 33rd in Chamonix last weekend. It's crazy. I feel like there's a real I hate to say changing of the guard because it makes it me sound like I'm, I'm discounting athletes, but we've got so many people coming through the ranks at the moment. Yeah, and the, the field just shifts a lot, really. You know, we'll see like we'll see one group of athletes through the semi-finals one week, and uh, sometimes a totally different group of athletes in the next. I think it just speaks to the the caliber of the of the climbers that we have. You doesn't matter whether it's a small field like here in Briançon, you really do have to perform to be able to make the next round. You yeah. can't really make any mistakes. No, you cannot. And of course, with the Olympics this year, it's been a strange one in terms of athletes missing some competitions and having very different schedules from each other. You know, there's been some who have done almost every competition, others who have just picked a couple to remind themselves what it's like to compete. Yeah, a lot of different approaches, for mm. sure. Um, it's hard to know whether you, you kind of need to get into your groove competing or you just need to train as much as you can and try to be in the best shape that you can. Uh, well, he rocks up. Got to trust that right foot on. Well, not a bad slope, but there's some friction in there. 
makes the match, adjusts the feet, and he's got that long quick draw above his head. Really working hard on that adjustment. Oh, he hits face on the way through that. Yeah, kind of uh, quite tentative so far, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You know, he's taking it slow, uh, making sure he doesn't make any mistakes. There's two, two fingers. fingers, why not? <laughs> Pretty casual, eh? Yeah, I don't think time is going to be a factor on this route. Although we did see uh, Jane Kim pretty much get timed out yesterday. So. Yeah, we saw a few of the women fall with not much time left. Mm. But you, typically, yeah, time is a bit less of a factor for the men than it is for the women. The men tend to move up. Oh, here we go. We're seeing this uh, turnaround sequence yeah, like I thought we might. Yeah, you spotted this, didn't you? Because yes. you said to me just before, and the first one to really do it like this. I think I saw that this was the intended sequence, but I also did suspect that few people would do it this way. Yeah. I think it's hard to set such a complex sequence that it's also easy enough to flash on a lead route. Um, but yeah, so far he's making interesting work of it, but it's almost certainly not the most efficient way to complete the movement. No, we saw this in Chamonix, actually, a similar style route. Bit of a pop-up and a big swing. We get to bring the feet quickly back in, and he's standing on no text with that left foot now. Yeah, spooky. Yeah, a bit. I think he was checking the clock. It took him quite a long time to get through that sequence. 3.56 on the clock and not high on the wall yet. Yeah, four minutes is plenty of time, but, it, you know, it, it does add up. It is still four minutes of, of just, you know, hanging off of small holes, four minutes of extra pump potentially. Um, and if he does get stuck a little further up, maybe he doesn't, he doesn't have quite as much time to work out those sequences. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, interesting round so far. He drops into the black hole, out with the right, shoulders engaged here. Sebastian, I tell you what, made everything look just brilliant out the wall in his first run. It's always hard to tell when you see the first athlete yeah, out. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, it, it wouldn't be the first time that he's come out early and had a really yeah. great result. You know, once, yeah, once you get to finals, especially with the semi-final being so close for so many athletes, uh, it really is like anyone's game in the next round. Let's see what Motataka can do here. Crosses through into a big pocket. All right, right foot down. You can see our top three so far. Motataka obviously in third at the moment. You can see his score ticking along on that graphic on the left. And now another big move. It's so cool to see that. Oh, wow. He's really oh. picking the uh, the funkiest way to get through every sequence. So probably a bit of a root setter's dream, but he's oh. tangled himself right around that rope. Now, this could be nasty if he falls here. He's going to want to get that rope out of the way as soon as possible. It's still not out of the way. And now he's, yeah. He's all the way around his chalk back. Now he gets rid of it, but that would have cost him some energy to sort that. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, like, the mental capacity as well. Like, having the rope wrapped around you, you want to be able to just focus everything you can on the climbing. Um, and I had that happen to me in qualifications in Wujang earlier in the year where there was this, like, crazy sequence. Rope got tangled. And, um, yeah, it takes a lot of, like, mental energy to get yourself out of that position and then back into the flow again. <laughs> So look, it's not something any climber would want to happen to him, especially not on a finals. Well, he's through that now, though. But it must have cost him some energy. A minute 40 on the clock. Yeah, he's looking good still. Like, he's definitely having to try now, but he's, uh, I think he's still fighting well. He's not making any stupid decisions so far. Well, he tried to bring the rope up for a clip, changed his mind, swapped hands with that. Approaching Utah's point, he fell on 38 plus. So 36 now. Trusting his feet, he's holding his nerves so well through this. Yeah, trying to stay composed. Working hard though, for sure. He's going to try to get this clip before moving right. Looks at the clock, yeah. He Less than a minute left. It's not a lot of time here. No, he'd be hard pressed to get to the top from here in a minute, but maybe he can set a new high point. Yeah, 42 plus is what he's aiming for. He won't know the score. He'll just know he needs to get as high as possible. That was close to falling. Matches now. I think he's running out of steam. Yeah, he was low on that. Okay, provisional second then with the 41 plus. 
Uh, well, he's back down to the ground. There's his teammate waiting on the far left. Sebastian on the right. <laughs> Big smile on his face, whatever. He's one of our shorter athletes. I don't think it really made any difference on that route, though. Well, he seems happy. He will go back to the stage in provisional silver as things stand. Next up will be Max Berton, so wait for this crowd to absolutely come alive here. And other people in the middle who are lying down with the uh, blankets wrapped around them. That's a good way to enjoy it. All right, well, let's watch some of his moments. It was dramatic, facing the crowd in that stance there. Looking nice and calm down there, but he had some moments. This was the rope tangle. And you can see where it happened. It was there. Yeah, and then it got tangled around his chalk bag as well as he kind of tried to undo it. And uh, frankly, I think he just made things worse for the most part. Yeah, sort of, yeah, and trying to untangle himself, he tangled himself more back down to the ground on that fall. Well, that reaction you can hear in the background is big, because big Max. noise from the French crowd. <laughs> well, there he is, waiting in the lights. And he gives a big wave to the crowd as he comes out. Now, as composed as he can be, this has got to be a moment for him in terms of nerves, keeping your breathing calm, remembering the route. There's so much that must be going through Max's head right now. Oh, 100%. And, you know, yeah, keeping calm in the home World Cup as well, in front of a crowd like this, as the only, you know, French athlete in the final is, is would be quite stressful, I imagine. Absolutely. Well, he's got 40 seconds here to remind himself of the route. And I like the fact he's taking his time here. He's not allowing the moment to get to him. A deep breath as he walks towards the stage, though. And uh, asking the B-Layer to go to the other side. Yeah, it's so important to, like, really just take the moment in. I think it's so, it's so easy to come out under all this pressure and just start climbing without really thinking. So it's nice to see that, you know, he's, he's calm and he's ready to kind of give it his all. Uh, reaches up high. I know, or I hope his sister Oriane is watching somewhere in the world. She will be preparing for the Olympics. And I would imagine pretty proud of her younger brother here. But as we've seen, nervy down low. He's feeling his way through these moves. Yeah, yeah, really sketchy little start. Get you nice and nervous before, you know, kick into the real thing. All right, drops down. I tell you what, if Max manages to get onto a podium here, this crowd is going to go crazy. <laughs> Up high into this Gaston style move. I wonder if he finds this turn. To me, it looks kind of almost more awkward to do that face I think move. so. I think so. And I think, you know, it made sense that... <laughs> oh, he's uh, yeah, cheering the crowd on already. Okay. Yeah, see, that method looks easier to me. Yeah, 100%. I think so. I think it's almost that you, you see that it's supposed to look a certain way. And maybe it's almost like a bit of a red herring. It's actually easier or more efficient to climb it in like a more traditional style. Or the route set is just really, really sad that their uh, idea hasn't yes. worked out. I'm not sure. I was watching Motataka when uh, Max did that move and he had a big smile on his face. kind of like, oh, okay, I could have done it that way. All right, up on that heel, crosses through. Hits the pinches, swings the legs. Max looking good so far. And he has quite uh, a lot of endurance, I've noticed. So I think this route, like climbing efficiently and then having to just kind of fight the pump to the end, could suit him quite well. And you sometimes see it. I mean, we saw it with Flora in the finals in Chamonix, although Max is having troubles here. Yeah, we saw it with Flora, for example, where, you know, she said to me, look, I've got no expectations on me, so I'm just going to enjoy it. And I think when younger athletes make their first finals, you see moves that you wouldn't see in a more experienced athlete. They just seem yeah. to just go for it. It's interesting, though, how quickly uh, the sort of the, you shift the goalpost of success, because yeah. when Flora finished climbing and thought that she wasn't going to make finals, she was really distraught. <laughs> so, you know, yeah, to go from having no pressure to all of a sudden feeling like making fi or not making finals is a failure yeah. is, is like a very real pressure that yeah. you have to deal with. No, you know, right. Consistency can be quite burdensome as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's a nice, it's nice for him to have this experience of the first final and hopefully he can like keep it cool after this yeah. as well. 
uh, great. And there's so much more media attention. I mean, from the IFSC's perspective as well, you know, we're interviewing them, we're, we're putting cameras in their faces, and it's, I think it's a good learning experience, but it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it can definitely feel like a lot oh. to get all this, go from being like a no-name oh. no to all this extra attention. Max goes feet first and toes. This is new and look great. I wonder if that was the sequence. He certainly made it look like it. Yeah, it, it made sense for sure. And he doesn't strike me as like a big, uh, you know, campus yeah. style climber. So I think that he, you know, he made that sequence in a way that worked for him. And I have a feeling Max might have kept that one to himself or perhaps did it instinctively. Yeah, for sure. So much of what you do on the wall isn't necessarily like a premeditated decision. Mm. Finals can go so fast. You just have to do what feels right at the time. Well, he went up with the left hand there, changed into a right heel. That looks better. Yeah, it was smart to readjust that and not just go for the move and fall. Yeah, you can get your weight on your on your feet a little bit in this section as well. So maybe get a little bit back, slow the heart rate a little bit. And he'll shake out here. It's sort of like a, quite a lonely place to be in front of thousands of people up on that lead wall. He's looking nice and calm as well, I think. Like, you can tell a, a climber is, is relaxed when they take this little extra time to shake each arm. Like, he's really just giving each hand as much time as it needs. You know, when they're rushing between the shakes, sometimes, you know, maybe they don't have enough energy to mm. hang around, but yeah, he's looking good. All right, well, he's through the bottom half. Let's see how much power he's got in those arms. Gets in a heel, he's got a clip down to his right hip. Opting not to keep the the foot out left for the clip. But a double clip as well, so he's got these out of the way. Mm -hmm. And the crowd responds to that one as he creeps up towards the high point here, into the underclink. 38 his score, so now he's on the provisional podium. Oh, look at this from Max, so he's grimacing hard. As yeah, he tries some to make pump this. really starting to kick in. <laughs> and we lose him at the same, same move as Sebastian. So he's got 42 at the moment. Do you think that might be adjusted? Maybe just a bit yeah, of a delay? Yeah, I think so. I think he'll uh, I think he'll have the plus pretty quickly. Um, it was a pretty, you know, convincing progression. Well, after four, there, eight, we, there go. we go. So after four athletes, Max Berton is in the lead. Exciting. Yeah, it's nice to it's nice to finish your route in the provisional lead. You know that you haven't lost anything from what you did in semifinals. So at, at the very least, you know, you're as well off as you were. You can kind of only do better from here, which is nice. Oh, well, Max waves goodbye. He will <laughs> in front of that crowd. Wow. He'll now go and sit. And as he said, he's done everything he can do. And he now needs to leave it up to the other athletes. Now, this is a new wall for us. It used to be down the hill, and they built this facility last year. It was kind of under development, and they've done some landscaping and proved things. That was his little wave to the crowd down low. <laughs> I like a little bit of showboating. Yeah, I really like this uh, this new wall. I think, yeah, we climbed on it for the first time last year. Um, it's as I've said, it's super long. I think from you know if you set a route from the bottom to the top straight up, it's like minimum 40 moves. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is, and the athletes have been having fun on it for the last couple of days. All right, we'll have a little pause in a minute, but we'll check the results so far. Max Berton leading the way with 42 plus Sebastian after that. Countback making a difference. That's countback to the semi finals. Matataka in third, and Yuta in fourth. Four athletes to go, four Japanese athletes to finish things off. You can guarantee some of them will be on the podium four to go then i mean yeah at least we'll have at least one japanese climber on the podium guaranteed yeah <laughs> All right, well, let's see some of the highlights from earlier on, shall we? Sebastian Halelenke led things off here in Briançon on his comeback from injury, and what a performance from him. He will be happy with that one, I would imagine, and enjoying being in front of the crowd. Yuta came out second, looked a little bit shaky down low, a couple of stabby moments, but he managed to save. That was the heel slip moment, and that was a rope tangle that almost caught him out, but he managed to flick that hand around it but burnt out a little bit and fell just before you start to traverse to the left on this wall. Mototaka, well, he gave us some drama early on. 
This was the spin move, fully committed to it, the only athlete to do it like this so far, and he had a rather wry smile on his face having watched Max do it very differently and him seeing the alternative way for the first time. Spun, campus through, no feet. And this was the rope tangle. Oh, it was a heck of a moment, this one. Spun himself more into it like a spider's web. Eventually sorted it out, hooking it around the chalk bag, but it did cost him some energy. And he fell shortly after that on that move to the side pull. And a big plummet back down to the ground. And then Max Bertrand, the last athlete out before this halfway point. Huge reaction from the Frenchman and this little cheeky wave at the bottom, <laughs> encouraging the crowd to get behind him even more. And then this foot first sequence through the black volumes. No one else has done it like this. It made sense for Max. Bit of composure. And then he fell on the same moves as Sebastian to leave him in provisional first. And that is the wall that we keep talking about. Absolutely beautiful structure with a roof protecting the athletes from some of the elements. We got a bit lucky with the weather. Occasionally it pours with rain here in Briançon, but no such issues. And Shuta Tanaka will be our next athlete out. So here we go as he gets ready to pull onto the wall to begin his finals run. Well, if you are joining us after that little pause, Shooter Tanaka is underway, and Campbell, with four to go, uh, four remaining. Hard to know if we'll see any top so far, but an interesting route. Yeah, definitely, definitely. We're seeing uh, everyone getting pretty high. We've said it's, uh, it's really a matter of climbing confidently and consistently through the first sort of two-thirds of the route. Um, and then I think once you kick off those big black volumes, it really starts to kick in. Um, and it's a matter of, yeah, how much gas you got left in the tank, realistically. Yeah, let's see what Shooter can do. It's a different schedule here in Briançon. Uh, we have a whole day off today, so the athletes do get a bit of a chance to recover. Uh, I mean, Campbell, as an athlete, we, obviously any break is, is good, but do you sort of lose your flow a little bit, you know, having waited around all day? Um, I don't know, yeah, I like to just like kind of get things started in the morning, um, kick off straight away. It's quite interesting having qualifications and semi-finals on the same day. Um, sometimes, yeah, it just makes everything feel like it's going very fast and it's hard to recover after qualifications. And then, yeah, you have this entire day of just like nervous waiting around yeah. before the finals. So, yeah, I like, I like to just, you know, get up, have my breakfast, go to the wall and get started. Yeah. Um, and it can be quite nerve wracking waiting for things to, to you know, you know hit full gear in the evening yeah absolutely all sort of builds to this moment and you can't forget about it of course you know when you're waking up having your breakfast you, you're being reminded of the finals to come yeah so. i always want to have like a sleep in or something but then usually like the nervous energy just yeah. wakes me up uh <laughs> straight away and then yeah you just got to spend the day trying to make sure you you know conserve as much of your energy as possible and you're here in this beautiful beautiful town in the middle of france and you kind of just have to sit in your like hotel room and and wait mm. really all right, well, Shooter crosses through, a little bobble on the foot, smearing on the wall here. And he's got that left foot buried deep into that pocket underneath. Yeah, not a lot of feet through this section, so like the, the speed with which you're able to make decisions is really, really important. And a big move out to the pocket. He actually made that shoulder catch look a bit smoother than everyone else. Yeah, yeah, he's looking good so far. Mm. Okay. He, was, uh, he was training in Innsbruck while I was there over the last couple weeks and yeah looking in really good form mm. trying some really hard routes and getting super high so yeah cool to see him in finals and see that work paying off yeah Innsbruck a bit of a hub for uh, lots of European athletes but of course international ones as well it's just it's a wall with a lot of hard climbing on it yeah yeah uh, so many hard routes and quite a central location as well you know you can fly into Munich and catch the bus and you're there and um, it's, yeah, I don't think you'll find anywhere in the world with quite as many hard comp style routes all in one place. Yeah, and that's where these athletes, or a lot of them have been preparing, because Innsbruck was a couple of weeks ago, so people have been based out of there. Right, crosses through to the pockets. Can't wait to see this move now. We've seen so many different variants uh, of athletes coming through here. And he's going foot first. Will he go double foot? Max got some toes involved here, and you can see Max there on your screen. Yeah, it's tricky to go foot first here and not like take up too much space with your feet as well. It's almost like but he kind of got stuck in two minds. Yeah, I think so. He's not quite sure with how he wants to progress. 
maybe it would have been more efficient in this instance not to use his feet and just camp us through. I think, you know, we're often taught as we're learning to climb that you want to use your lower body as much as possible, but yeah. sometimes it really is just faster and more efficient to just camp us through. Yeah. Because he, he would already be through the sequence and, you know, he's kind of spent a few extra moves trying to figure it out this way. Yes, and I think he's in some trouble here because a down climb like that is very physical to do and obviously psychologically tricky to manage. He is in some trouble. He's trying to match his hands. All types of problems. Now he manages the match. But does he have the power for this campus? Well, he swings through okay, but he's going to have to match again. I'm not sure if his hold is perhaps a bit more accommodating for that than the last one. Yeah, not such a, not such a struggle there. Yeah, I often say when you see an athlete start to climb back down, unless it's for a quick draw, it maybe not going to be climbing up for too much longer. But, you know, he's, uh, it looks like he's found a little spot to recover here. The route is perhaps a little bit more forgiving than other finals that we've seen. Yeah. No, I think you're right with that analysis. It's exactly that. But, and a minute 18 on the clock as well, so it cost him in time. Exactly. And he wants to be able to use as much of this time as possible to recover as much as possible. Mm. But at the end of the day, you know, he is is a minute long enough to make it to the top of the wall from here? Probably not. No. But maybe he can push it for a high point. Well, he's got a lot of work to do here. So he comes into that left hand, makes the clip. Max did a double clip here. He's, oh, sorry, in the next bit. Right, so adjusting with the feet. Yeah, tight time is going to cause him problems. I'm not sure he's got time to get to the high point, to be honest. Yeah, it would be quite a struggle, especially he, I don't know if he's aware of the time. He's still moving quite slow and controlled sometimes you know you think six minutes feels like a long time a lot of the time it's hard to stay on the wall for six minutes and then every now and again you do and uh you barely realize that it's happened yeah yeah and there's no sort of buzzers that goes like in bouldering to remind you exactly yeah they used to back in the day be a one minute warning but now you can you can check the time yourself athletes are always able to look back and see the time mm -hmm. worst case scenario they can ask for the time but yeah, with 12 seconds left, he's still shaking out. I would hazard a guess that he doesn't realize that his time is about to end. Yeah, six seconds. He will get cooled down eventually, but it's quite hard to hear sometimes. So don't expect him to, oh, the DJ's announced it. And he slips as well. Uh, not the best of runs, and it has left him outside of the podium as well for Shuta Tanaka. Yeah, unfortunate when it works out like this. and I, it, you know, it's it's really part of the game when you have a quote-unquote easier route like this one. Um, time management is really a factor because, you know, we saw where these athletes have fallen. There's quite a few moves left to go, and they're already at the 41, 42 move mark. So, you know, you, you break down that many moves across a period of six minutes, and it's not a whole lot of time to spend hanging around at each hold. You know, you really have to pick your moments when to charge through and when to take a second and breathe. No, exactly that. Well, this is where it started to go wrong. That was when he'd worked the sequence out. Although those matches as well, just not the most efficient way through. And the foot popped, but he had run out of time by that stage. I think at that point as well, the Balea maybe had been uh, pulling him off. Ah, okay, which can, tug. <laughs> which can cause your feet to slip when like your body position changes. Okay, Zento Murashita comes out onto the pads. The pads? No pads here. Onto the, uh, what do you call it? Stage, I onto guess. Onto the stage, yes. I guess. Onto the field of play, <laughs> yes. if we're getting, you know, technical. No, thank you. I'm glad one of us is professional here. Well, he was ninth in Chamonix, 11th in Innsbruck, and he competed in Wujang, so clearly he's going for the lead season here. Wujang was his best result so far in fourth. And before that, Junior Weath World Championships, where he picked up a bronze medal. Yeah, quite young um, and already picking up some pretty standout results, which is cool. And yeah, I find the young athletes tend to perform quite well at these like longer World Cups as well. Um, yeah, maybe when the moves aren't quite as hard individually, it's a lot easier to find that flow. Yeah. And yeah, young guys sometimes don't feel quite as much pressure maybe or are able to just sort of disappear into their climbing, it depends. And that's something I think we've seen more this year than any other year is the young guns coming through. So many 16 year I remember when 16 was a, a real talking point. Now it's just something we mentioned. Yeah, really common. But then you also have these athletes, like these older, yeah. quote unquote, older guys. You know, Sebastian Halenke is a bit older than I am. Jakob Schubert is yeah. climbing stronger than he's ever climbed Crushing. before. And he's <laughs> in his 30s. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see. And I think, yeah, different 
styles of routes can favor different kinds of climbers. Yeah, and there's the most stunning of sunsets. You could see it there, purple kissed clouds in the background. Absolutely beautiful. All right, what's he gonna do here? Will he spin? No, he doesn't spin. Yeah, he got that left foot into the, onto the foothold that's blocked by that pink blocker. And I think from there, it was pretty, pretty clear he was gonna just step through. All right, so cruising at the moment, nice and calm. And actually, one of the smoothest opening sequences we've seen. Yeah, he's looking really good. I mean, he is the first of our athletes who topped the semi-final. So these last three climbers all finished the semi-final route and it counted back to the qualifications. So it's kind of anyone's game on who could, uh, who could, you know, take the winning performance after this point. Yeah, that's a good point and worth remembering at home. So if every one of these last three, all of them top the route, then we do go back to count back. And we've seen this happen quite a few times, especially, uh, let's say, the Imori Yanni Garnbrett battle that happened in Innsbruck. Yeah. It just shows how important the semi final is at yeah, the moment. Yeah, 100%. You know, even qualifications, you, regardless of the depth of the field, mm. you know, you have to put in a good qualifying performance because if two athletes, yeah, top or even if they fall on the same move, it has to go back to the qualifications and to the semi finals to determine a result. Yeah. And obviously, a lot of people, uh, you know, tend to criticize that, but it's hard for the setters to get that much separation. Yeah, and I mean, you know, so, yeah, sometimes it really is just two athletes falling on the same move, um, and there can be so many different factors as to why that happens. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's hard to be perfect, but, you know, that is part of why we have three separate rounds of competition, is that to, you know, have that that separation so that ideally we never have to go back to time as a factor, you know, you want it to be on a, you know, a, a, the basis of the merit of one's climbing and if yeah. it happens to go back to the semi-finals then that's just part of the game. I completely agree with you, time is the worst. All right, well he's so, I mean, compared to the other athletes who got through that sequence, that's the best I've seen. Yeah, yeah, he looked really good. He had like a, maybe a little bit of a, not a slip, but you know, not super controlled coming in, but yeah, he's got uh, just under three minutes left, so plenty of time if he doesn't spend too much time hanging around in this next, next sequence. Yeah, so this is impressive stuff. He's, and he's checking the clock as well, 2.30. It's quite easy to look back and see two minutes 30 and be like, oh my gosh, like, yeah. that's not much time. But you know, yeah, you do it, just have to stay calm. And if he manages his time from here on out, there's, you know, plenty for him to make it to the finish. All right, so he's really left things in a good position here as he comes up to the first of the slopey left hand holds. Rocks up on that right foot. Into the pinch. Just, it, it's almost hypnotic watching him at the moment. He's so calm. Yeah, he's really flowy. He's climbing really well. He's, uh, you know, he's taking the time he needs to make good decisions. He's not rushing anything so far. I'm talking about, you know, that efficiency before reaching the uh, the hard sequences of this route. I think he's so far. It looks like he might have nailed it. I agree with you. This is good stuff. Swings those legs over. Now, for the first time, you see a little bit more effort going on. Had to work for that move as well. Yeah, shaking out though. Still looking pretty confident you know, casually into the 42, but this is our, yeah, making the clip as well. He's fine, isn't he? He's got, he's definitely got energy so, to burn. Yeah, 43 confidently. Uh, we are seeing some, some new territory from this point onwards. Yes, he bumps Max out of the top spot. He's into provisional gold. He hasn't done that clip. Oh, forget what I was about to say. He makes it work with the right really hand. Really stretched out. A jump to come though. No, and a jump like that, you know, you might look composed when you're doing uh, moves without dynamic sequences in, but the second you have to jump, you then realize the pump. Well, yeah, for sure, you know, he was coming from such like a stretched, elongated position. You could see his, uh, his fingers were quite open. He was in what we call like drag, where your fingers are almost straight. Um, and it can be, you know, it's, it's nice to hang back on a drag, but it's quite hard to generate like a lot of force from it. Um, so yeah, having to, it's like, you know, trying to do a pull up and the start is always the hardest bit or yeah. the hardest bit to do fast, you know? So that's kind of what he had to do there. And it was just a little bit, 
you know, yeah, a little bit yeah. stretched out. That's such a good way to describe it, actually. You're totally right. It's that, that, that first bit it, on the that initial, is Yeah, that initial activation. You don't have a lot, like you're activating kind of the, the smaller muscles. You don't have a lot of wiggle room to mm. generate a lot of momentum. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also he'd already climbed, you know, 40-something moves. He's probably pretty tired <laughs> yes. at that stage. Well, good work from him. He's in provisional first place. Two strong athletes to come, though. Both of those topped the roots, so we'll have to wait and see. That was the move that finally got him, but what a performance from him. Great work. Falling on our Trango Quick Draws, new sponsor for the IFSC. Nice to see those keeping the athletes safe. So Satani Yoshida coming out onto the stage, and I'm loving watching him climbing at the moment. Yeah, he's looking in really, really good form. Um, yeah, quite a lot of participations considering he's only 20 years old, 31 times in the World Cup, and a one bronze medal as well. And like we said before, he's uh, performing really well in the bouldering mm. at this point, and looks like that sort of extra power is, you know, uh, translating over into his lead climbing as well. Let's see what he can do here. He has those wrists always taped like that. I need to ask him about that, actually. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, wrists taped and um, those little, uh, I think they're like acupuncture pads. Yeah, they're, they're bits of a, uh, well, it's other two things. It's either they have a bit of metal in them yeah. uh, or it's kind of like a pressure point thing. Yeah, yeah, I think I've, I've worn them before, tried them before once, but you know, teach their own, I guess. Yes, exactly. I'm not sure medically how, uh, how proven they are, but yeah. why not? Yeah, he was 12th in Chamonix, 12th in Innsbruck, 11th in Wuzhang, so consistently in the top 10, but be good and obviously improving on that here. And he does like this wall. He was third in Briançon back in 2023, so last year when he was 19. Yeah, this, this event is really the, like, lead specialist haven you know we get like mm -hmm. some jumps and stuff but the wall is just so long and the roots tend to be very old school in yeah. style so yeah a lot of the lead specialists really like this event i'd imagine campbell obviously you're in the olympics this year but uh i imagine maybe looking forward to the the disciplines being separated perhaps in the future yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'm not gonna lie i i think even even if the disciplines aren't going to be separated i think i'm really going to enjoy switching back to lead uh, as my specialty in the coming season it's it's really difficult to to manage both and perform well in both and i think for me like my bouldering really improved and my lead is just like not quite where it, mm. it has been so you know it's been a really really interesting journey it's going to be nice to switch back and just enjoy my favorite discipline for a little while. Yeah. I like how you use the word interesting, where I imagine you, you meant frustrating sometimes. Sometimes frustrating, yeah. yeah. Parts of it have been like really wonderful. There's always something you can take from the other discipline, yeah. um, but then also frustrating, you know? Yeah. It's made me realize how much I love lead, and no matter how good my bouldering gets, I want to be a really great lead climber. So. You know, it's nice to know that about yourself, yeah. I guess. No, absolutely. So Satoni has been good down low here. Let's see if he can do this smoothly. He's going foot first as well, and then changes his mind. That's the difference. He, he tried it and immediately yeah. swapped rather yeah, than yeah, going yeah. back. Yeah, he made you know really quick decisions and has heaps of time as a result. So good work from him, no issues, didn't get caught in the trap. Has the heel and the t right toe on, nothing smearing on that black volume. And you were saying how hard it is to uh, to tell what the texture's like on those black volumes. Yeah, I mean, something else that's quite interesting about this event specifically is a lot of the holds aren't what we are used to seeing in other parts of the circuit. Um, yeah, and so there's sections of these volumes that are quite textured and then other parts that are quite slippery. and some that maybe look textured but don't actually feel that good when you get to climb on them and you know you mix that in with all these different jibs and volumes that you've never yeah. grabbed before and it's like a, it's a whole different game and a hard one to read from the ground of course so up he goes darkness descending now on the stadium so out with the right hand there's a thumping heartbeat of a tune playing in the background here yeah, really good at confident climbing so far. Marishita far out in front with that 47 plus. <laughs> Co 
crossing through. Good so far. Up he pops. Yeah, looking easy thus far. Mm. Little fumble with the right hand, but he, you know, he made it work. And he's now he's starting to look real pumped at this section. But he, yeah, makes it work. Yeah, that's going to push Max further down the order. It's the left now. Oh, oh no, like hand, what was it? Pop, I think it's like a dry fire almost. Yeah, dry fire, I think. I think he def you could definitely see a couple holds before he hit the hold, really, his fingers were really closed on it, and they just like were slowly opening. That was kind of where I thought he was going to um, lose it. He managed to get a few more moves through, but yeah, just wasn't able to apply quite as much force as he needed on that hold, and then yeah, it, it fired off. So uh, yeah, a bit of a shame. And you can see from his reaction, I think he probably had more to give there. I think so. I think he felt like, you know, he'd, he'd pulled it back in and he was back in the zone. And then, yeah, wasn't to be. No, well. It's, it's so easy to feel like you've uh, you've lost out on a big opportunity when mm. you're feeling like that. And it, and it you know, it doesn't come together. So, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult emotion to deal with. Yes, it is. Well, we'll see some of his highlights. He's waved goodbye to the crowd off camera now after composing himself a bit. Good decision making down low when he flicked from feet first to hands first. Let's have a look. That wasn't the best angle. This is a better angle to see. Yeah. Fully fired off with that right hand. You can, you can see like a sweaty line of his, uh, of his fingers. Uh, well, he's done whatever. Let's see the next athlete. So, last climber out then, Shiona Mata. He's climbing in last position because he qualified in first. He probably would have heard that uh, shout, actually, from Satone backstage. So he knows something would have yeah. happened. Well, yeah. he would. Actually, we, we have a view of the uh, backstage area, and I caught him just pacing back and forth uh, a couple of minutes ago, like a sort of a tiger. <laughs> yeah, there. hearing everything that's going on around the back, and you know, you get all these little cues as mm. to how the route might be going. He would know that people are getting high because, you know, it, yeah, if someone's taking six minutes to climb the route, mm. they're probably getting pretty far through it, or at least they have the opportunity to shake out and to rest. Um, yeah, so he knows that if he wants to get a good result out of this final, he also has to climb super high. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, all of this information or all these uh, conclusions are just speculative. So sometimes you can get stuck in your own head about mm -hmm. what the final maybe does or doesn't look like and how people are or aren't performing. And on the flip side, I guess he would have known there's no top so far because he would have heard a bigger reaction. Yeah, you can, you can usually hear whether there's been a top or not. Um, I guess he might not know, though, because the main isolation area is quite far from the wall. Good point, yeah. Uh, you, he, and he's in the second half of this final, so he might not have heard how the first few climbers are going. Um, yeah, so as far as he knows, this route was topped initially, but yeah, it's, 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 hard to, it's quite hard to tell, and it's really easy to guess. Yes. All right, well, let's see if he hasn't talked himself out of climbing well on this one. Facing into the wall. So no dramatic moment. Comes up with the left hand, keeps the right foot on for a long time. Good tension to do that. And up underneath with the hands. Gets a heel in, cruising so far as we'd expect. Of course, we don't know how much energy they're expending on moves like this. Look at that backdrop. Mountain silhouetted now, darkness almost complete. Yeah, the spotlights come out and it really changes the, the whole atmosphere of, of the event. Yeah. It's I would so much fun to climb under a spotlight. Uh, I've only only gotten to do it like a handful of times, mm. but yeah, it just it really does make a difference on the whole atmosphere of the event. I think I'd want to be uh, in the women's side of the competition tonight, you know, you, you climb in the full darkness. Yeah, that is super cool. Although it is past my bedtime, you know, <laughs> as we get into the into the later evening. Oh, you're going to have to stay with me. You're not going to leave me, are you? Oh, no, no, okay, no I'll be here. Goodness. I was thinking about this yesterday because our semi-final went quite late, you know, uh -huh. and we were, uh, I was like, you know, I usually have to have like a Red Bull or a coffee like two hours before I climb. <laughs> and I'm like, imagine having a Red Bull at 9 p.m. and then doing a final and having to try to go to bed and be ready for the next day. Yeah, it's true. It's very intense. Uh, absolutely. And the humidity creeping up, 43% now. We saw this last night as well. It rises 
throughout the evening. Doesn't really affect the athletes too much. It's uh, no, cool enough. The temperature drops quite a bit. Mm. It, it's quite hot during the day here at the moment, and then really cold in the evening. Yeah. It's easy to be caught off guard as you are. You know, the final goes from being in the mid-20s to the mid-teens. Absolutely. Well, he's going for the big foot swing. Now, we've seen quite a few Japanese athletes try this. And not many commit to it. Only Max has made it work. Well, that's nicely done. A good hybrid of the two methods. He's looked a little, like, a little pressured or a little nervous in some through some parts. Like, I don't know. There's just something, a little something about his movements that he wants to be as efficient as possible and maybe it looks a little forced sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, so far, Murashita and Yoshida are guaranteed medals. Just depends on what color they are. Max still in the running for a podium, but this is the only man who can take him off that. And yeah, but he's, even though he looked like he was maybe trying to over control things earlier, he still looks really fresh. You know, it doesn't look like it's uh, had any you know, massive impact on his form so mm -hmm. far. Um, he looks, you know, yeah, really in control still. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him, you know, cracking that top three. Okay, he's still got some work to do though. Let's see how much energy he's got left. Brings the feet through underneath. You just got to believe in the rubber on your shoes here. Oh, and that was a bit awkward. I think he'll drop, yeah, drop right before making the clip. Oh, he's not comfortable here. Yeah, you're having to trust some pretty sketchy feet in this section. Well, now he's got it in and makes the double clip, perhaps making up for that moment of hesitation. One minute 35 on the clock, no problems with time. This is where we ramp it up though, he's on 37 now. Yeah, it kind of looked like he, he lost a little bit of energy between the steep and mm. coming into this head wall. I agree. And will it be, you know, enough if he keeps pushing through? But yeah, it's still good. Well, he's nearing Max's score here, so if he goes a bit higher. Oh, and he looks in trouble. Can he make this move? No, he can't. But we think countback should yeah, push that, Max out. That looked to me like a 42 plus, which would, yeah, push uh, Max off of the podium. There we go, and yeah. we can see the update coming through now, so Shiona Mata in the provisional bronze medal. Well, a Japanese lockout oh, of the podium. Oh. oh, no, he just threw up. Oh, I think that's pure fatigue, maybe? Nerves kicking in? Yeah, that's, um, I hope he's okay. Yeah. Well, not, not the nicest of moments to be caught on camera. I think he is all right. Just, uh, I've honestly, uh, I've had moments in World Cups where it's, you know, sometimes you just try so hard and you're, or you're so nervous yeah. and it really does feel like you might throw up. Yes. So I can really uh, empathize with the poor guy right now. I hope he's, yeah, I hope he's feeling okay. Yes, I hope the camera's given him a little bit of space because I think it all kind of caught up with him then in that moment. Oh. Well, he certainly gave it everything yeah. on the route. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and he's having that conversation. Yeah, we'll sit down. I think I would too. Well, yeah, let's take a moment, have a drink of water, maybe rinse your mouth out. All right, well, let's see some of his moments then. It was on those black boxes that cost him. That clip actually was pretty important. I think that's what cost him the win, but it is a podium place. All right. Out he goes, hits that left hand, and that was the big dry fire. Just got him into bronze, though. It was, yeah, kind of a pop with the right hand. Yeah, I think, like I said before, you know, as you get pumped and you can't apply as much force as you need to, it, it becomes a bit more likely that your hands are going to, you know, fire off. So a Japanese lockout of the podium then. Zuta Murashita leading the way with 47 plus way out in front. Then Satoni Yoshida and Shion Omata making up our top three. Max Baton close on his first finals, but not quite. Sebastian Halenke, what a performance in fifth. Yeah, really fantastic, you know, coming out early and showing us some really special climbing. And I think, you know, we've seen exactly how important performing in the semifinals is. Yep. You know, that, uh, that final bronze medal position going back to the performance in the previous round. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, that 42 plus, as you said, highly important. Matataka after that, Shuta Tanaka and Yuta finishing things off. So that's the men's finals done.
We'll have a little bit of a turnaround here before the women's finals. Eight more athletes to come. And they will clear the stage and get ready for the next climbers. So, Campbell, you're going to go and interview Zento. So uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. Hope you can have a Red Bull on the way, and uh, I'll see you in a bit. Awesome. See you soon. Well, as the stadium is reset, the crowd will have a little moment to pause as well. We'll turn our attention from the left of the wall over to the right of the wall on the women's route. Some dramatic moves there as well waiting for us. And wow, it really is a packed field here. The stands at the back selling climbing gear, clothes, food. The drinks are flowing. It's a fun atmosphere here. And as Campbell said earlier, it's a real climbing town, this one. There's some wonderful places to go. Cragging, rock climbing on a rope, or bouldering in Al Fouad, for example. And a lot of the athletes will be doing that in the next few days over the weekend. And you can see that that's the future of our sport, for sure. And uh, pretty happy to be on camera as our camera picks them out. That's our top three. Great performances, especially from the man in the middle. 47, way out in front of everyone else. So Tony Yoshida there, hanging his head. But yeah, what a performance from those three. There is a podium to come later on. That will follow at the end of the evening after the women's. And they will leave the stage and go back and find Campbell, who has the microphone. So just a reminder, you can follow along for extra content on the World Climbing Club on YouTube, free to watch. Not only do we have results and highlights, we have interviews backstage. We sneak into places like isolation to give you guys an insight into what goes on behind the scenes at a World Cup as well. We have the grid walk where I wander around <laughs> trying to annoy athletes as they're trying to qualify, getting some pretty uh, unique reactions from them. All that is free to watch on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe for that. And of course, follow along on all our social media, Instagram, Flickr, and the rest. Facebook for updates. Well, we were all dropping into darkness there for a moment. It's like someone hit the dimmer switch, but it comes back on now. And everyone will reset and get ready for the women who will be announced and introduced. Let's have a look at the men's winner, shall we? Great performance from Zento Murashita. Yeah, it was a strong performance throughout the run from him. It was just his calmness that impressed me. Super focused, not really much drama going on. Committed to that campus move well. Although I did love Max's foot first ref through that. And that was where he fell, jumping out right. Finally running out of steam, but a great climb from him high up on this stunning Briançon wall. Well, the women will be waiting patiently in isolation for their turn to climb. Eight more athletes will be joining us in a few minutes, and we will find out. We will get onto the women's podium. All that to come, of course. The light show continues here in Briançon. And a shout out to our photographers here who are working behind the scenes as well. Yeah, you can check out Jan Vert's photography on the IFSC Instagram page and go give him a follow as well. Our photographers uh, join us at every event, capturing all of the rounds. And a reminder, we had speed as well the other night. You can see the speed wall on the left. A great competition that was. Well, Campbell has found Zento, so let's go backstage and catch up with our winner, shall we? Zento, uh, congratulations. You came so close to a podium earlier in the year, and you've just won your first World Cup. Uh, how do you feel? Well, 
feel really happy and uh, also surprised uh, he got a one. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. How did the how did the route feel for you? Do you feel like you were able to put in your best performance today? 今日のルートをどう感じましたか。ベストパフォーマンスでしたか。最初から自分のペースで登れて自分の実力を出し切れたと思います。Uh, um, he could、uh, push his limit and then he could、uh, perform it very well.、Yeah. well I'm, I'm super glad to hear that. Again, congratulations、um, and best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you so much.